يكون الويبينار اليوم يستفيد من الحالات اللي تعرض الحقيقه انا اللي سويته انه طبعا انا كنت رئيسه لجنه الامتحانات مده طويله ففي عندي اكتشفت عندي مجموعه اسئله هيوج يعني ممكن تسوي كتب ف طبعا هي ما هي حالات كلها هي حالات مجمع من جميع الاكزامينرز اللي جو خلال السنوات الماضيه اللي هي السته الماضيه اللي انا كنت فيها رئيسه اللجنه وقدموا لنا حالات للمشاركه فانا اللي سويت اني اذا سعفنا الوقت اليوم انه نراجع اسئله حقت ثلاث سنوات اختبار اللي هي حقت فاينل بورد اكزامز طبعا الاسئله في بعضها طبعا تتفاوت في صعوبتها بعضها صعب بعضها سهل فانا عشان كذا حرص انه طلبت منكم انه كل واحد يحط عند اسمه الليفل حقه فانا في قبل ما احط الاسئله راح اطلب انه يكون واحد ار 4 او ار 3 او وات ايفر حسب مستوى السؤال لانه هذا هتكون على شكل الويبينار هذا سؤال وجواب يعني ما هيكون كلام مني هيكون عباره عن كانه اختبار اور لو اوستي لكل واحد من الريزنت اللي بيمسك السؤال فطبعا ما هتكون في إجابة على الأسئلة أسئلة آه، إذا كان في أي شيء تستفسر عنه ممكن تحطوه في الشات آه، وبعد كذا في آخر الويبينار آه، ممكن أنا أشوف الأسئلة وإذا تحتاج جواب نجاوب عليها تمام صوتي واضح يا بيان واضح دكتورة طيب أنا أبغى أر يمسك السؤال هذا في عندنا اي ار 4 في المجموعه او ار 3 يحب يبدا بالسؤال هذا يسوي ان ميوت لنفسه ويعرف على اسمه يعرف على نفسه اختار انا في دكتورة شهد ار 3 تحبي تاخذي السؤال ولا في ار 4 في احد يا جماعه من الموجودين داخل فاينل بورد اكزام في احد يحب ياخذ السؤال سامعيني؟ الجماعة اللي معايا في أحد معايا ولا أنا قاعد أكلم نفسي ولا كيف؟ إي سامعيني دكتورة. Anyone are for would like to answer؟ طيب أر في أر 3 معانا؟ أنا شايفة أكثر مسجلين أر 1 أو على الأقل حاطين أسمائهم. اه ما في احد دكتوره شهد معانا دكتوره شهد ار 3 يمكن هي اكثر ليفل يعني موجود معانا تحب دكتوره شهد تسوي ان ميوت لنفسك ولا انا اسوي لها ان ميوت في أحد ما أدري مثالي ممكن ما في أحد سامع شيء. مسمع دكتورة. في دكتورة دكتور عبد الله خان دي آر فور دكتور عبد الله خان. دكتور عبد الله ما أشوف اسمه أنا هنا. دكتور عبد الله عبد الله خان أي مس أي لغم؟ عبد الله خان السلام عليكم دكتور عبد الله اي نعم معك عبد الله خان كيف حالك؟ الله ار 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 4 كيكش ممتاز 
نبدا فيك ان شاء الله بدا مخاي خلص طيب دكتور نبدا سؤال بسم الله يلا طيب اوكي So uh, uh, this is 23 years old lady presented to the ophthalmology clinic complaining of abnormal looking since I birth, uh, since uh, birth. So I can see multiple uh, photos of uh, the eye uh, or of the face. Uh, let me, I will, I will start with uh, this uh, picture here. I oh. believe uh, the patients were asked to look uh, up, but we can see that she has uh, bilateral ptosis. And all, this is primary position. So if it, this primary position, I can see uh, the patient has bilateral ptosis, and okay. the ptosis is uh, looks uh, severe. Like in, maybe in the right eye, the MRD I would say about one or less than that. The left eye, it uh, would say about zero, and the, also she's using her frontalis muscles. Uh, just to, to help her uh, to, uh, to elevate uh, the lips. Uh, regarding the eyes, uh, we can see that the left eye, she has uh, exotropia. Uh, and even the right eye, I'm not sure where she's fixating, but both eyes seem to be uh, ex uh, exotropic. Okay. Uh, then if we looked in the picture of, in the the screen the right uh, uh, top uh, we can see yes she the patient is looking up she's asked to look up yeah so here if she's looking up also we can see the, uh, almost the same picture she, she cannot elevate so the, in both eyes the bilateral ptosis is still there there might be slight improvement in the left uh, eye regarding the ptosis, but the eye movement, there is no eye movement there. The, then I will look, uh, okay, this picture, I believe she was asked to, to look in the right. Can see my arrow? Yes. This is looking right. Okay, now if she's looking right, also there is no movement at all. Uh, the picture uh, is the I should be moving the right eye, maybe little movement. Uh, yeah, almost. Thank you. On this picture, uh, this one almost again, there is no movement. The lids are the same, the eye movement. The, um, I cannot appreciate any infraduction in both eyes, and also uh, this. I think it was the own the examiner only lifted the upper lid. Yeah, so that you yeah. can yeah, you can't she's looking now to the left. To the left and the, again the same uh, moment. So uh, to summarize this uh, case we have patient with uh, bilateral ptosis and also bilateral like I would call it like uh, uh, external ophthalmoplegia. So as a differential, what is uh, coming to my mind is a congenital... You have finalized your diagnosis. And you say that I have patient with bilateral diagnosis and bilateral limitation of movements in all directions of gaze. Yes. So the, because now you are at the stage of description, and I told you just describe your findings. Come on. Sure. Sure. How would you approach this patient? And when you are asked uh, this question, uh, how would you approach the patient? Or may you start with the history? Okay. So, what are the points in the history that you want to examine? Sure. Uh, so, first, uh, in the uh, history, uh, I, I would like to ask what is the chief complaint? Here it was seeing presented only to the clinic. What is the chief complaint of the patient? And okay. then I will start uh, if the chief complaint is this, like the ptosis and also uh, the limitation of uh, eye movement. Since when it started? Is it since birth or uh, developed later on? Is it progressive uh, or not? Uh, is there any uh, changes uh, during the diurnal uh, changes during the day or night? Sorry, your voice is a far uh, doctor. Very important point. Uh, what is it? 
So that, this is a very important point. That yes, you yes uh, sure. And also we'll ask uh, uh, any uh, any surgeries have uh, been done? Uh, was he diagnosed with, with anything? Is there any muscle weakness uh, in the body? Uh, okay. Is there uh, the family? Is there any uh, other family member who has the, the same problem? Uh, we have almost covered all the questions and the points with that you mentioned about the positive family history is very, very important. Okay? Yes. Now the second step after history, you go on to the examination. Sure. Uh, we have already examined the patient. Uh, we have uh, we have the findings. We have the findings with us. Um, uh, what are the other things that you want to examine? And you now we have examined the uh, eye movement. Yes. Regarding uh, ptosis, you mentioned the uh, the MRD. Also, you want to check. Yes. So, so uh, if we are talking about the examination, first of all, we would like to, if we can have a, a, a complete look of the patient to, to rule out any syndromatic uh, feature. Now here we can see only the eyes. Uh, after that, we will start uh, uh, checking the, regarding uh, the ptosis. I will check the palpebral uh, fissure height, the MRD, uh, levator function, uh, and uh, the better uh, function, also the, uh, the uh, lid crease. Uh, here I can see it in one of the eyes is present and the other eye is not present. Okay. Uh, so Wait. that's regarding the ptosis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what are we missing? What is it? So what are we missing? Regarding the ptosis or? Examination in general. Yeah, ex examination after that, then we will proceed with the VA, the IOB extraocular movement. We already examined it. Uh, the pupil exam, uh, looking for a a APD. And also, we have to do slit lamp examination, starting from the cornea, but most importantly, we have to see the fundus, uh, okay. do the related fundus exam to rule out any pigmentary changes. Okay. So I'll tell you our findings. Her visual acuity in the right eye is 2040. And in the left eye, she's counting finger at two feet. Uh, mm. Her uh, slit lamp examination is normal. And her fundus examination is also normal. OK? Sure. Uh, her uh, pupil examination is uh, round, regular, reactive. So this is the findings in her examination. So uh, the next question I want to ask you is give me a differential diagnosis on uh, the most likely uh, disease that uh, has affected this patient. So uh, uh, one thing regarding the history, is it progressive or suspect? Uh, you mentioned that it's, it is stable. Uh, and it's been like this since she was born. She never had any surgeries uh, regarding her uh, strabismus or regarding her uh, position. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll think about a congenital fibrosis syndrome okay. or uh, other differential, uh, although maybe the history can rule out this, uh, this differential, the chronic prog progressive external thermoplegia. Uh, other in the uh, differentials, uh, like uh, muscular the dystrophies, like my myotonic the dystrophy. Okay. Uh, uh, so what, where would you put your money? On which diagnosis? I would think mostly re uh, the congenital fibrosis syndrome, since uh, since birth. What are the points that are in support of this diagnosis? What support is present since uh, birth? Okay. Uh, it's not uh, progressive. And also, it has the external thermoplegia of all uh, muscles. Okay. Yeah. But um, why is it not uh, myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia. We said the, uh, regarding Messina, I'm not sure if the history, did she mention anything regarding uh, uh, 
uh, improvement uh, during the day or changes during the day and is it uh, does she has any other uh, muscular uh, problems it could be in the differential myasthenia so also we have to look on it how would you rule it out myasthenia first by history uh, if we ask, is it uh, mainly the neuronal changes? Uh, does it uh, uh, get worse at the end of the day? The, in examination, we have many tests like the ice uh, back test, and also if we ask the patient to look uh, for a prolonged uh, period uh, up, then we will notice uh, tosis. Okay. Other uh, tests it will be the tensile test. But that's where usually they don't do it in the clinics. Okay. But, what about, do you want to go ahead and do any uh, radiological or lab investigations for this patient to confirm your diagnosis, or you're happy with, uh, with uh, your conclusion? Uh, I, uh, for sure, we need to, to confirm the diagnosis. Uh, okay, how? So now we say, we said as a, as a differential we uh, we mentioned as a myasthenic gravis or congenital uh, or uh, uh, muscular uh, dystrophies. So uh, re re regarding myasthenia, we can ask for the AC uh, acetyl choline receptors uh, antibodies. Okay. Uh, uh, regarding the uh, myotonic dystrophy. Okay. Uh, we can do uh, EMG, uh, EMG electromyography for the muscles to see the, their uh, uh, actions. Uh, other uh, investigation, it could, we, we can include, include imaging, uh, MRI, to rule out any uh, intracranial uh, lesions or any uh, uh, neurological uh, cause uh, centrally. Yeah, you would also look for uh, look at the size of the muscles uh, mm. because in in uh, uh, the um, uh, congenital fibrosis syndrome you expect some degree of atrophy in the muscles, and uh, this is the exact finding that this patient had. Uh, mm. So this patient most likely has developed congenital fibrosis. Uh, how would you manage this patient? So usually the treatment here is regarding the try to help her with the tosis and visual rehabilitation uh, mainly. So here if the patient, uh, she's already old, uh, 23, so depending on her symptoms, uh, regarding the tosis, we can slightly improve it. Uh, and also if she's concerned about the cosmetic uh, the exotropia, then we can uh, uh, consider that as well by doing the strabismus surgeries. Okay. Which, which surgery you will do first, the tonsil surgery or the muscle surgery? Uh, usually we have to do the muscle uh, surgery, then we will uh, do the tosis. Why is that? Because uh, if we did the tosis uh, if we did the muscle, it might uh, uh, affect the, the lid. So the lid might be corrected sometimes with adjusting the muscles. Okay, very good. Thank you, Dr. I'll give you a first mark on this one. Uh, that's good. And this, is one, this, uh, this was one final question uh, a couple of years ago, and um, you did extremely well. Wait, can we uh, move on to the case number two? And if I have someone to volunteer, uh, going to, the, to participate, please. And let's make it quick because we have almost like 25 cases. The um, uh, that I can, we can go through it, uh, but it depends on your participation and your cooperation, and then we can go on as long as we can, as you wish. Do I have a participant? Whoever wants to participate, you can unmute, and it can be an R3 or an R4. Even an R2 can take care of this uh, question, next question. Although it's an abor a board exam question. 
Okay, and the volunteer. I'm waiting. Victor, can we see the, the next case? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is a uh, newborn baby. He presented, uh, was brought in by his parents to the uh, clinic because they noticed an abnormal appearing eyes, as you see in the photo. Abdullah Alhamdi, where are you? So uh, this is four month old newborn presented to the ophthalmology clinic after his parent, uh, parents noticed abnormal appearance of the eyes. Okay. You tell me what you see. It's this is external photo showing a face of the of a baby. Uh, there is a prominent uh, telecanthus and uh, and epicanthus inversus. Also, with magnification, the the conge looks normal and clear cornea, but it looks uh, cataractus lens in both eyes. Sure. Don't tell me cataractus. Tell me I, he has leukocoria. Yeah, right? leukocoria. Yes. Before. You have what pupils? You don't know if it's cataractus or not because you haven't examined the patient yet, right? Yeah. So, um, what are the points in the history that uh, you're going to ask? First of all, I will ask. I will start about uh, asking the uh, prenatal, natal, and postnatal history. If the if the child is full term and type of delivery. Uh, after that, I will ask about uh, any, uh, about the, this opacity in the lens when the parents they noticed it, and they will ask about uh, other medical issues. The patient has any other medical illness, any uh, uh, any medications or patient taking any medications since birth, and they will ask about the family history, family history of cataract, congenital cataract, family history of other. Uh, or family history of uh, retinoblastoma and a systemic review of the patient. I will ask about any other uh, systemic anomalies generally. Okay, and you will ask about consanguity? Yes, important, yeah. As you mentioned, do you mention and ask other members on the, in the family who has similar uh, problem and about other illnesses, especially metabolic diseases, diseases, any genetic diseases in the yeah. family or particularly in this patient. Okay, fine. Okay. Now you move on to examining the patient. Yeah, in examination, first I will uh, look to the general appearance of the patient. Uh, any uh, prominent uh, nystagmus or, uh, or strabismus. Uh, after that, I will uh, start to check the uh, visual acuity in this age, any, either with uh, preferential locking or follow and fixation at this age. Uh, after that, I will uh, check pupil reaction. I will do red reflex to see the density of the cataract. And uh, I will uh, check the uh, IOP, intraocular pressure. After that, uh, slit lamp uh, examination portable. Usually in, uh, in such uh, patients, if the baby is un, uh, it's not cooperative, I might examine him under sedation or under anesthesia. So when you examine him with the slit lamp, what are the points that you would uh, particularly look at? Yeah, I will examine uh, the, uh, the, lid, the lids, if there is any abnormality in the lid, uh, conge, cornea, is there any corneal anomalies? Is there any signs of trauma uh, at birth? Uh, I will assess the... Uh, the density of the cataract, the size, is it uh, occluding the pupil more than uh, two or three millimeter uh, in size, even before dilation? Uh, and I will examine uh, the fundus, uh, and if there is no view, I will uh, do B scan. Okay, and so of course, you, you should, you should um, look carefully at the 
uh, configuration and at the uh, pupil, make sure that the patient doesn't have any, um, because you want to know, is this an isolated cataract or is this a syndromic cataract? Yeah. Associated yes. with, with microcornea, with aniridia, with the coloboma. Uh, you want to look at the corneal diameter, uh, the iris configuration, the depth of the anterior chamber, and the clarity of the cornea. And of also at the lens position, is this cataractous lens that is in the position or is it subluxated or dislocated? Yes, sure. Uh, the latex on this examination was not possible in this patient. Uh, there was no view. So um, uh, give me your uh, differential diagnosis for this particular patient. So uh, differential diagnosis of uh, leukocoria, uh, like uh, congenital uh, cataract, Okay. Uh, for for different any uh, causes of congenital cataract uh, and uh, retinoblastoma, I have to rule out uh, malignant uh, tumors and like retinoblastoma. In addition to ROP, uh, toxocariasis, uh, uh, PHPV, which is any uh, common in a uh, unilateral, uh, okay. and uh, uh, vitreous hemorrhage, uh, condensed vitreous hemorrhage at birth, uh, coloboma, bilateral coloboma. If the patient, yeah, yeah. what else would you expect him to have? Why is it not PHPV? Because uh, PHPV usually it's unilateral and uh, the uh, it's usually unilateral and the globe uh, the globe size is uh, smaller in the involved eye. So it's microphthalmia. Yeah, microphthalmia. It's microphthalmia. Okay, tell me about the cataract, the congenital cataract. What's the, what's the most uh, important mode of inheritance? Usually it's uh, autosomal uh, dominant okay. in uh, two-thirds two of patients. Yeah. If, if, uh, if uh, there is a family history, and usually there is no need to go back and investigate the baby for other causes of congenital cataract. And what are the metabolic diseases that can uh, be associated with um, cataract? Uh, like uh, galactosemia. Galactosemia? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Fabry, diabetes, Wilson's, so many diseases. Yes. Okay. But I'm, I mean uh, metabolic disease, uh, galactosemia. Okay. Uh, there are uh, different any yani, other uh, syndromes that might cause yani, such presentation. The lab test that you want to go just for this patient before you go ahead and start your line of management. What are the investigations you want to do? Uh, first, it depends on my differential diagnosis. Uh, is it familial or sporadic? Uh, if there is no family history, I have to do investigations like uh, torsion. I have to rule out torsion infections. Okay. Uh, I have to rule out galactosemia. Okay. Uh, and uh, I need to do, uh, before that, uh, I have to rule out retinoblastoma. I have to do B-scan to rule out retinoblastoma or malignancy in the posterior segment. Now, will uh, diagnose confirmed in a congenital cataract, right? Confirmed, yeah, congenital. Yes, if it's bilateral congenital cataract, and usually it's, uh, as we mentioned yani, before, if there is a family history, usually there is no need for investigations. Uh, but if there is uh, if, if there is no family history, I have to do investigations. Uh, Torsion infection, uh, I have to rule out uh, galactosemia. Um, how do you rule out the galactosemia? You do a urine test? Yeah, urine test. As I remember to see the metabolite of, I forget Sarah, the exact name. Urine for reducing substance. Yes. Uh, okay, so how would you go ahead and uh, lines of management for this patient? Lines of management. So uh, it depends on the density of the cataract. Okay. If it's uh, like this patient, it's yeah. a surgical, and you have to do surgery. Okay, because it's definitely millimeter. It's almost like five millimeters. Yes. Yes, and now it's uh, late, and uh, he's uh, four months now. So in this patient, they have to do surgery as soon as possible. Okay. Well, um, Without delay. Why is it that when you see nystagmus, is this uh, what does this tell you? This patient has nystagmus too. 
nystagmus means uh, he has uh, amblyopia and poor vision. So, so this, this is important to tell the parents about this because uh, the, the expectation for vision change is different when the patient has uh, nystagmus from patient who does not have nystagmus. So you have to inform, although a lot of patients yeah. with their cataract, their nystagmus settles down a lot. And it, yeah. it, definitely this patient uh, is managed late. Uh, what is the optimum time, timeline for, for management? Usually, if it's uh, bilateral, uh, up to uh, eight weeks, and if it's bilateral. And unilateral? Six, six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks. Uh, unilateral, one month. And uh, four to six weeks four in unilateral weeks. patient. Up to six weeks, it's okay. After this, you will be worried about amblyopia. So this patient yes. is up to four months behind. Um, what, uh, okay, what would you do? So uh, in this patient, I will do uh, lens extraction with uh, posterior uh, capsulosis and anterior vitrectomy. Uh, so and so usually better to leave those patients efficacy so uh, at this age. At this age, it's not it's better. It's not it's better. It's it's contraindicated. Uh, so yes. far, nobody is doing uh, intraocular lens implantation for patient uh, kids who are four months old. Uh, yeah. The young uh, that we are doing is six months in some countries. In most of the countries, they don't they don't implant before uh, one, one year. year. Yeah. In the meantime, what would you? How would you manage the patient until until you are able to do a second IOL? Yes. Uh, after that, I will uh, give him uh, uh, either uh, contact uh, contact lens. Yeah, usually for the best for them is uh, contact lens. Contact lens. Uh, yes. Why? Uh, what's our experience with the contact lens in our in this area of the of the world? Yani, ma fehmt wala sualik doktora. What do you mean? How how popular is it? How successful is it to use contact lens in these patients in this age group? Yeah, it's uh, it's good for them, and yani it's uh, it's successful. Yeah. yeah, and it's the only, uh, yani our option in our hand. Yani we cannot uh... contact lens. Yes. No. Uh, now, a patient who have bilateral bilateral congenital cataract or an opaque uh, mm. area of the of the world, the the best management for them is to use opaque glasses. You will rarely find this. Uh, giving uh, these patients uh, contact lens because of uh, mm. in, in, um, in uh, putting the contact lens in the compliance of the patient and the patient is bilateral. So the easiest thing and safest thing is to give fit him with a packet glasses. Mm. However, the patient who have unilateral cataract the issues, uh, things are different. Uh, the best option and the best visual uh, rehabilitation comes with the contact lens. However, yeah, because they're nice and yeah, You will still, still, still see patients in our um, clinic who are being fitted with uh, unilateral or effective uh, glasses, even if they have unilateral, contact, uh, unilateral uh, cataract, simply because mm -hmm. it's very hard in this part of the world to, to uh, use contact lenses for the patient. And the patients are usually uh, non-compliant. It's expensive. Um, uh, it might drop from the eye, and the patient, the parents, they don't know that it has dropped, uh, or they have lost it. And then you have the risk of infection always coming in this. In this so um, unfortunately, it's uh, it's unsuccessful. And uh, you will always go ahead and do the uh, fit the patient with a thick uh, glasses uh, until. Mm -hmm. Ready for the um, secondary IOL. Okay. Okay. Um, who's our our uh, now? Uh, you, are you okay discussing it this way, or you guys want me to go through the cases without us answering the, uh, one at a time? If you can maybe go to the chat and um, tell me what you need, what you wish. If you wish to take one case at a time with one. Uh, being as uh, examined, or uh, we want to just to show you the cases and discuss them myself. Uh, 
Dr. Amal, uh, I have a question regarding the glasses in this age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, four months, you will give uh, the patient as uh, as uh, bifocal or just you will just give him uh, hyperopic uh, mm -hmm. correction. You will give him any yani, slightly hyperopic. Okay, you will, uh, no, you just use hyperopic uh, correction. Because the patient at this age, uh, they don't they don't appreciate the use of the bifocals really, even uh, even patients who are uh, older than this one. Uh, once the patient uh, start looking like he's uh, two years and more, we usually use the bifocals because at this age, if the patient start um, uh, start to uh, use um, and be more interested in. Um, uh, in his uh, surroundings and looking at um, near objects. So uh, yeah. so um, with the, we we we'll defer the bifocal uh, until later age. Okay. Okay. Uh, so do you want us to go ahead uh, continue as such with the discussing one case at a time or uh, let me know what you need. شكرا دكتور عبد الله. يعطيك العافية دكتور شكرا. So uh, I need also an R3 or R4 someone who's graduating uh, going for his final this year. Any volunteer? دكتورة Yes. Some of the resident, I, I agree with you regarding uh, going over the cases, so that will give us more opportunity to see more cases. Uh, okay. I, Victoria? Whatever you like, and I, the, the, the way I prepared this was to be an interactive session rather than uh, an actual lecture. Uh, and I see that nobody wants to participate really. Like in, uh, it, it is, it's more yani, if we really take one at a time. Uh, and then let's just do a few cases uh, for the residents who are graduating this year. But if nobody wants to participate, I can go ahead and refer uh, to But really, it's more of an interactive session. It's not meant to be um, uh, a lecture. Can, okay, طيب. can you go ahead and uh, raise hand, please? Someone? Can we see case three, Victor? So this is a gentleman who is 63 years old, uh, complained of double vision. He was involved in a motor vehicle accident 20 years back. Okay. So this is him and looking in primary position. And this is him with his head position. And there is another photo for his eye positions or eye movements. Can I see someone sharing please? For discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Muhammad. Uh, Dr. Ali, yes, raise his hand. Dr. Muhammad, as well. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, with me, my Dr. Ali. No, Muhammad, Muhammad Al-Atabi. Muhammad uh, Drewish. Yes. Thank you. So this is 63 years old, uh, complains of uh, double vision since a motor vehicle accident 20 years back. 
So I can see in the left photo, the external photo of the face, you can see that the, uh, he's fixing with the right eye with severely uh, uh, medially deviated left eye. Uh, in the left eye and the left right photo, you can see that he's having a mild face turn. Uh, okay. And again, we can see this uh, significant limitation of the left eye. Okay. So what are the points in the history that um, you think you want to ask the patient? So I, I need to know if this is, uh, number one, uh, does this patient has any uh, comorbidities? Does he have diabetes? Uh, was the, the road traffic accident significant to the degree that he's having a loss of consciousness or uh, intracranial uh, damage? Uh, also want to know if uh, this diplop, does he have diplopia or not? Any history of surgery also important. I'd like to know if the patient had received any uh, like uh, Botox injections. Uh, also, I know, want to know if the patient has um, uh, like uh, I can see that um, the why head position. Is he why is he turning his head this way? So yeah, I want to know does he have like a, uh, a diplopia? Uh, that's uh, number one. Uh, is he symptomatic in that term? Also. Uh, um, so, the, uh, so whenever you see a patient who has a head position or a face turn like this one, you know that he, when he looks this way, when he's in primary position, he will have. What, what is he going to have? What is he gonna have? Sorry, uh, sorry Doctor, I, I, we lost you for a while. What's your question? That why would the patient take such? Yeah, again, I want to know: uh, is he avoiding a position that he has double vision that will uh, make him uh, like uh, complain or yeah. not? Yeah, the, the reason why is he taking a head position, a face turn, is because he wants to avoid diplopia, right? Yeah. So you don't need to ask this question uh, because yes. nobody will take this face turn unless. He has diplopia when he looks in, pra, in primary position, this way, right? Correct. Okay. So he, he, this patient never had any surgeries. Uh -huh. uh, he had a trauma. He never had any surgeries. And uh, he, he just been um, handling his issue, uh, the double vision, by uh, turning his head to the right side. Um, his trauma was he was in the ICU for like a couple of months. And when he recovered, he had no, uh, um, he had no uh, uh, comorbidities. He is, I mean, he's well otherwise. Perfect. But uh, since he has this history, I need to rule out some other differential diagnosis. Uh, for example, if he has like a history of thyroid disease, if he has any history of uh, floor fracture from the trauma itself, uh, Duane syndrome, is this uh, from uh, like a, uh, uh, from congenital or not, this is, will be obvious uh, with the examination. Um, yeah, uh, after that, uh, we'll proceed, we can proceed with the examination. Okay, so this is, the, this is our examination. Uh, okay. So just explain or describe what you see. So we can see that in the uh, primary position, he has significant esotropia, fixing with the right eye. I would say that he is also uh, having having some limitation when he looks to the right. Uh, I, I suppose that he, the left photo is he's trying to look to the right. We have also see, uh, we see also a uh, limitation of the right eye on the apiduction. Is that correct, Victoria? Is he looking right here? Yeah. Yeah, he's looking right here. This one? Yes. He's looking to the right. Okay, so he has also limitation of the uh, lateral rectus in the right eye. And we can see that he has also limitation in the left gaze on the left eye. Uh, so production is... Uh, mildly involved uh, and infradiction also but mainly he has bilateral limitation of abduction uh, in both eyes fixing in the right eye more so in which eye fixing in the right eye yeah so his, his limitation is more so in the right eye right his, his abduction is more in which eye so uh, he has both limitation of abduction but more in the right eye in the right eye, and the patient, or oh, he is fixing, as you mentioned, the right eye. is the right eye. That's why he's taking his face turn. Was right face turn. Right face turn. Okay. 
Um, so now his uh, visual acuity is in the right eye is 20 20 and the left eye is 20 over 28. Okay. No significant refractive error. Uh, as you mentioned, he prefers his right eye. Uh, what would you ask him about his diplopia? What question you want to ask? He mentioned Okay, so I need to know, uh, is it constant or does it come and go? Is it vertical or horizontal? Is there any torsional involvement? Uh, does it uh, go away on uh, occluding one eye or not? Um, that will uh, make me think of a binocular, which is most, uh, more, more likely in this case. But again, from the trauma, we need to rule out uh, anatomical uh, changes to the eye. These include the lenticular, corneal, angle structures, uh, retinal tears and detachment with a full examination of the fundus. Okay. Now, his uh, MRI, uh, right after the accident, uh, he was reported as normal, and um, he, he, and he was stable um, neurologically since then, and he had his MRI repeated several times, and it's reported as normal. That's normal, okay. So I need to know uh, also, is this angle, uh, I need to do for, uh, like uh, orthoptic workup, uh, check the angle, make sure it's stable, uh, and uh, see if the patient uh, has a stable angle over follow-up period or not. So his, his angle is almost like uh, 45, is in diopter, and um, uh, in, in primary position. And notice that when he is looking to the left side, his angle of deviation is, his deviation is less, right? Yeah. When he's looking to the right, it, it's, it's, more. it's more. So this is called what? Secondary deviation. Or secondary deviation. Uh, the reason why he's fixing to the right is because it's his left eye. His vision in this eye is better. It's his preferred eye. Uh, what are the tests that you want? So we, we did examine, uh, we did his anterior and uh, segment and fundus examination as well. And we need to do also his refraction. Uh, so what's the diagnosis in this patient? So uh, giving the history as well as the examination, I would say bilateral uh, sixth nerve palsy uh, and giving the MRI is normal. That's also an indication. Uh, but uh, again, uh, ruling out the other uh, possibility, such as Duane uh, retraction syndrome, but it's not here also. Okay. How would you manage the patient? Uh, first of all, uh, we need to, uh, since he's having significant head position and he's complaining of diplopia, that is an indication of intervention. Uh, I need to, as I said, we need to make sure that the angle is stable before doing surgical intervention. That can be... Uh, confirmed by uh, follow-up visits. Uh, we can give him a trial of prism, uh, frenal prism, uh, to minimize the diplopia and see how the patient will, will, uh, will uh, feel with that. Uh, but again, in, the, uh, in this uh, case, I think surgical intervention would be the best option. Okay, if this patient came to you uh, like three months following the accident, okay. would your management be different? Yes, I think uh, within uh, like a three month period, observation would be a better option because it might improve with time uh, and give the patient routine follow up to assess the angle as a routine for a visit. How would, how, would, how would the patient handle his life and yeah, during the three months had it? What would he do? So we can give the patient options. Does it, uh, if we can, uh, number one, uh, give him prism or occlude one eye that will minimize the diplopia. Um, and uh, I think that would be the best option. Yeah. Okay. Or Botox. Botox also is another option that will minimize the uh, like uh, atrophic change, sorry, the, uh, the hypertrophic changes of the uh, medial rectus muscle and might improve the, uh, the strabismus. Okay. Uh, so if the patient came like three months and he wants a surgical intervention, uh, you would go either with the, with the prisms or uh, I wouldn't go give him Botox at least um, for the first six months following the trauma. Following this, I can give you, why do, you, why do our people use Botox? Sorry, uh, your voice, Victoria, has... Uh... Why, do, why do you want to give Botox as an option? Okay, so Botox can help uh, some, uh, some reports that it might help with the uh, resolution of the sixth nerve. 
but again, to avoid hypertrophic changes of the medial rectus and the contracture, because with the, the tonicity of the medial rectus, with the lack of uh, action of the lateral rectus, the medial rectus might get hypertrophied, and that will worsen the, the strabismus. So if this you will get restriction or you get restriction of the, uh, then you will have a paralytic plus restrictive element in the in your squint, right? Yes. Uh, so to do the, so to avoid this, you can do the buttocks and um, before surgery or what are other tests that you want to do uh, uh, to just to, to verify the amount of paralysis that the patient has in the muscle? So uh, we can do, uh, number one is uh, to do saccade as well as uh, smooth pursuit and as well as prism. Uh, we can uh, also uh, give the patient trial of uh, uh, prisms if it is to to tolerable, but uh, warn him that it might affect his vision and what see if he. What would you? Uh, what test would you do in the in the clinic to to know the amount of paralysis the patient has? So we we do the full extraocular motility, then we assess uh, with the uh, saccade. Uh, that also uh, can be helpful. Uh, again, we can also uh, you measure the angle in different positions uh, and also check for force generation test and force duction test if that's possible. Okay. Yeah, so uh, his, his force generation test uh, showed, um, showed no, uh, no movement or no generations in the uh, right left muscle. Okay. And force duction test showed that his uh, mid-directus muscle is tight and as well as his left knee directus. So he has tightness in both, in both eyes because it's a, why is it, why is it he has tightness in both muscles? Because of the constant uh, contraction and isotropy that he's having. And it's, it's long standing. It's been there for 20 years. So you expect some elements of contracture in the muscle. Okay? So uh, yeah. his, line, his, his management, of course, is... Uh, is Sorry. Okay, let's uh, just look a little bit on the surgical uh, options that we have for this patient. What are the surgical options that you can do for this patient? So we can, uh, number one, in the right eye, since he's having no uh, force generation test, uh, resection of the lateral rectus will not, will not be a good option. Uh, the left eye, uh, on the other hand, uh, has some uh, movement that we can, can be considered. But I think uh, the best would be uh, bimedial rectus recession, uh, with or without uh, rectus resection in the left eye. Okay, and or you can do um, also consider transposition. Correct. Consider transposition uh, of the muscle, especially in the uh, in the right eye. Uh, which muscle? Oh no! Which muscles would you transpose? Um, might consider the uh, superior rectus in the right eye uh, okay. to the lateral side. Okay. With or, with or without inferior rectus, of course. Okay. Uh, why why do people go and uh, transpose one muscle at a time, or or two, the two muscles at the same time? What's the pros and cons? Well, uh, I think uh, like. Uh, uh, number one is to avoid anterior segment ischemia since you are going to operate in the medial rectus, number one. Uh, the other factor, I think uh, some reports also uh, good uh, outcome with only one muscle, uh, for example, superior in the right eye, that will have good tonicity to improve the angle itself okay. without, without the need of doing another surgery, without the, another muscle. Okay. Uh, some people can uh, transpose the superior and inferior at the same time, and to avoid uh, uh, anterior segment ischemia, they can go, give Botox to the medial rectus uh, in the same eye, so that they will not operate on three muscles at the same time. Especially that this patient is 62 years old and he is a very high risk uh, for uh, anterior segment ischemia. Uh, but it's 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 uh, you know, if you get two surgeons, um, each one of them will might um, go into a different plan. Uh, the only thing against the buttocks in this patient is that he has restriction in the knee directus muscle, so uh, the buttocks might not work. So you might need to do a recession 
uh, in the media rectus because the media rectus is tight. Uh, uh, and transpose uh, the sphere rectus in the same way. Okay. Uh, okay, I think we are through with this uh, question. And as I mentioned, if you have, if any of the um, uh, residents wants to have any question, they can do this. Uh, they can do this on the chat. Can we move on to the fourth um, question? Thank you. Uh, so this is a four-year-old boy presented with drooping in one eyelid. Uh, otherwise, he's a healthy child with no systemic complaints. So I need participant, please. Can we have someone? Okay, Abdullah Khan. Assalamu uh, alaikum. So uh, uh, this patient, first I will start with describing the patient. We can see the face of the, the patient. It's showing in the left eye there is a ptosis. Uh, the ptosis is covering the visual axis. And okay. also th there is no abnormal head position can be seen in this uh, photo. Uh, the left crease, I can see it is like uh, present uh, in uh, like about two millimeters above the red margin. Okay. So, uh, uh, as approach first, uh, we have to ask uh, history. Uh, since when they noticed uh, the ptosis, and uh, is there any changes uh, when it started uh, till now? Uh, was there any surgery done to, to the patient to improve the ptosis? Was the patient initially having abnormal head position then he lost to that. Is there any nystagmus? Uh, uh, any glasses? Uh, have uh, they seek any medical advice before uh, any patching uh, to the eye? Uh, then also as a cause, uh, if there is any trauma, uh, elaborate more in the birth history, if there is any forceps uh, delivery. Uh, I can see here the, it's written the child uh, is uh, healthy. Yes. So those are the, the main uh, things that uh, we should ask in the history. Okay, so uh, they, they tell you that um, uh, his ocular and medical history was unremarkable, as you said. Uh, his ptosis was noted at age one year. Uh, hmm. Since then it has been stable. Uh, the parent insisted that um, it wasn't there since birth, but he, he was normal until he started walking like that. And then uh, they noted that he had ptosis. Um, they did not seek any medical advice. He never had any symptoms before. Mm. And um, they claimed that his ptosis is worse at the end of the day. And uh, that when he woke up in the morning, um, his. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit better, but um, they claim uh, it's um, it's the, the it's loose in the morning and um, uh, when he wakes up and a little bit worse by uh, by the end of the day. So, so th this is a very important point in the history that is uh, get worse during the day. So maybe we should ask also the the history is there any dysphagia or dif difficult in uh, swallowing? Yeah. This uh, the complaints is growing, is um, developing mm -hmm. milestones, everything that mm -hmm. is wrong. That's good. So, uh, with this history, what is coming to my mind that the differential is uh, to have myasthenia, uh, myasthenia ocular myasthenia, like uh, graphis. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, we can proceed with the examination. Uh, as I mentioned, maybe in the first ca case, the, that we can do the eye spec test and also the fatigability test uh, in the clinic. Uh, the tensile and test usually is uh, not being done. Uh, laboratory, uh, or uh, maybe we should uh, complete the ex examination. Yeah. Uh, other, to complete my examination, I will check the VA, uh, special rule uh, uh, in both eyes, rule out uh, amblyopia, then I will check the extraocular motility. Uh, 
uh, also check for the. Did you expect the station to have? Um, what is it? Did you expect the station to have any ambulance? Uh, do I suspect uh, this patient have any amblyopia? Uh, the voice is not uh, really yeah. I, not hear you. Expect this patient to have amblyopia. Yes, I do suspect that because of the the lid is covering the the visual axis. I'm not sure during the day how is it, but since he he came to me with this uh, tosis. Yeah, I think there is, yes. Yeah, but he's 40 years old, you can always test him, right? He will be, he will cooperate with you for the visual activity. Yes, yes, uh, sure. He, he, his vision is 20-20 in both eyes. And mm. um, his ocular muscle movements are normal. Mm. Good. So if the extra ocular uh, uh, muscles are normal uh, and also the no APD, uh, or check uh, other cranial nerves. Uh, okay. Then, uh, what about the eye spec test and uh, the fatigability test? Okay. Now, uh, g give me your differential first. So, sure. So, as differential, uh, as we said, the uh, ocular mastina gravis, or it could be other ne neurological uh, causes. Uh, or it could be also a congenital ptosis, less likely, but it is uh, one of the differential. Uh, traumatic uh, ptosis uh, could be. Just an isolated congenital ptosis. Uh, what is it? It can be just an isolated congenital ptosis. Yes. Because it can be. Or, yeah. Well, there is something I uh, forgot to mention in the history. Uh, is, uh, is it related to the showing or not? Because also the differential it could be a mark scan uh, or something. Yeah. No, no, he has, he has no relation to showing at all. Uh, now, um, Horner's, can it be Horner syndrome? Horner, uh, yes, it uh, can be. Mm -hmm. For that, maybe you should uh, check the pupil. Okay, so we, we should check the pupil because you, uh, you didn't miss that. You didn't mention that we should check the pupil, uh, the pupil and it, it could be a third eye. Mm. It could be a third nerve uh, uh, Would it third nerve uh, also affect the extraocular uh, muscles? Yeah, it, but, but you can have, you can have yes. it. A mild uh, trauma to the third nerve, whether trauma, trauma, birth trauma, or something yeah. that can just give you an easy, a partial, partial third. I see. Okay. Um, so, what is what is the uh, first thing on your list? First thing on your list for for uh, diagnosis. Uh, what is what? The first thing. The first that. The first diagnosis is uh, myasthenia gravis uh, till now. Okay, no myasthenia. Yes. And um, what are the last tests that you would do to confirm ocular myasthenia? Uh, acetylcholine receptor antibody. Okay. And also we have to check the thyroid uh, function test as well. Um, now, if it's if it's an isolated. Uh, Myasthenia, how reliable is the lab test? Does it usually give you good results? Do you really have uh, high level of uh, antibodies? And, uh, 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 regarding the sensitivity, I'm not sure, but uh, also we have uh, anti uh, mask uh, anti antibody. antibody yes. Yeah, even sometimes it's not very reliable because because the um, if it's only an isolated um, um, ocular myasthenia, but of course you should do it. Yeah. Uh, okay, and we did also the um, the Kinsilon test. Uh, then in this case we have to refer the patient to uh, the neurologist to do this. We 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 don't have we don't do this in the um, Clinic. What is the management plan for this patient? 
So depending on the, the uh, definite diagnosis, if the diagnosis is myasthenia, then we should uh, refer to the patient to a neurologist to treat that. Usually they will give them uh, like a very, uh, uh, what is it, uh, a, a few segments. Uh, what is it? Yes. Which is a part of the segment. Yes. Yeah. What's the prognosis for pediatric myasthenia? The prognosis usually, if I'm not mistaken, if it is past two years and it was only ocular myasthenia, then there is good prognosis that it will stay only ocular myasthenia. Uh, a high chance. I'm not sure about the number, I, but I remember it was uh, high. Uh, however, uh, the patient can have uh, uh, systemic myasthenia gravis. Yeah. So if it progresses to systemic uh, myasthenia, then the patient will need chronic treatment uh, uh, of paradigmin. Um, it can progress, of course, to affect other parts of the body, uh, including the voice, facial weakness, uh, difficulty in swallowing, etc which can be and difficulty in breathing. Yes. But if it stays for a long time as ocular only, this will carry um, a good prognosis. Okay, great. So uh, we can move to case number five. Can you, now, is it okay now? Is it okay now? This is case number five. An eight-year-old girl presented with a, for a routine checkup. And this is a slit lamp photo. Can you all hear me? Hello? Hey, Dr. Sami. Can we have someone take over this case? We can have even R1, if we have an R1 who's willing to take this case, it's a simple case, relatively. Mm. Any volunteer? Um, okay, uh, this is a Sitlam uh, photo of an eye. Uh, the focus uh, is um, to the iris. I see a whitish uh, nodule or lesion on the uh, epithelial uh, on the uh, epithelial surface of the uh, iris. I don't see any other abnormalities. Okay. So um, how would you approach this patient? So this patient came uh, for a routine examination. Um, I would ask if the patient has any complaints or, or if the uh, patient um, has um, 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 a general examination, uh, as a general uh, history questions uh, of uh, medical, past surgical, history of trauma, history of uh, uh, medication uh, use, um, history uh, of uh, uh, like uh, uveitis, um, redness, uh, photophobia. Um, when you see such a nodule, would you ask the patient about something? You mentioned uveitis or inflammation in the eye, that's good. What else would you ask? I would ask if there's any skin lesions, uh, any, um, um, uh, um, 
the uh, fibromas uh, of uh, the skin or any neurological uh, abnormalities. Okay. So uh, this is her skin lesion. She showed you this skin lesion. Um, this is a, a hyperpigmented uh, lesion. Um, I would call it a cafe au lait uh, spot. Okay. So uh, what, are, what is the other points in the examination that you, uh, that, uh, you want to uh, look at? Um, well, the, um, um, well, there's an uh, ocular examination and systemic uh, examination. For ocular, ocular examination, I need to rule out orbital involvement, like um, um, proptosis or um, uh, lid lesions, uh, like uh, uh, proptosis for optic nerve gliomas and uh, neurofibromas of the uh, eyelid or plexiform neurofibromas, um, uh, lesions of the iris, like lesh nodules or iris mammalations. Um, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, for um, uh, the um, uh, ocular motor defect, sometimes uh, occurs in uh, neurofibromatosis uh, patients. And for systemic uh, examination, I would look for um, uh, plexiform neurofibromas at the uh, feet, uh, sole of the feet, um, um, and neurological examination, uh, axillary freckles. Uh, um, yeah. We examine the fundus. Yeah, if I examine the fundus, uh, there might be uh, association with the uh, astrocytomas uh, or nevis, or uh, there could be um, due to optic nerve gliomas, uh, a uh, uh, optic nerve um, elevation, or a. Um, um, uh, capillary malformation or an um, obtuciliary shunt. Yeah, so th this is called um, phacomatosis. This is a group of diseases which is called phacomatosis, where you can have um, you can have a fundus lesion. Uh, how does the, does this fundus does this um, fundus lesion affect vision? Um, right, it's usually incidental, um, but it can affect vision. Depending on the location. The location, yes. On the location, usually it is stationary or progressive. It's stationary, but some reports says that there has been um, 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 changes within the uh, lesion itself. So, what is it that will affect, will mostly affect the vision in these patients? Optic nerve gliomas. Optic nerve gliomas. How would you approach the patients? Um, so after um, examination, um, I would uh, do a genetic test for NF1 gene or NF2 genes. Um, I would do an MRI uh, to uh, rule out optic nerve gliomas or uh, involvement of the uh, uh, looking for plexiform neurofibromas anywhere at the spine or uh, brain. Um, and sometimes they have a sphenoid uh, wing um, uh, um, hypoplasia. Hypoplasia. What's the um, what's the mode of inheritance in this disease? Um, well, uh, usually uh, there's uh, two: um, uh, autosomal dominant and uh, autosomal recessive. I fr I kind of I always kind of mix between uh, which one. Um, Is it a dominant form? Yeah. Uh, so, um, so now the cause of the visual loss in this patient, you mentioned optic nerve glioma, and what else can they have? They what, have, they could also have myopia. Myopia, and they could have glaucoma. Yeah. So another cause of the visual loss in this patient. Now, uh, tell me what, what are the criteria for the diagnosis of NF1? Um, and the criteria is um, axillary freckling, um, uh, two or more neurofibromas, or one plexiform neurofibroma, um, and um, optic glioma, um, uh, six or more uh, cafe au lait spots, 
So at least two of these criteria could be, um, uh, uh, should be present to diagnose with the neurofibromatosis type one. And um, lish nodules, two or more lish nodules. Okay. And, you mentioned the, and of course, if, if the patient has a first degree relative, like a mother or a father, who yeah. has, this is also another one of the criteria. And uh, you mentioned the lash nodules, and that's the, okay, so we mentioned more, most of them. And of course, uh, the, the freckles can either be advisory or inguinal. Yes. How would you manage the patient? What, would, what else would you do for her? What, what, what would you tell the parents? Um, so depending on what patient uh, presents uh, with, I, uh, usually I check um, um, if the patient has, uh, it would depends on uh, the patient, uh, the presentation. Rarely, uh, we usually refer the patient to a neurologist um, to evaluate uh, neurologically uh, the patient and um, to excite uh, any uh, mass effect on the uh, brain itself. If the uh, patient, um, 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 we need to check also blood pressure uh, uh, because some of them um, have uncontrolled blood pressure. Um, uh, for the glioma, we there have been um, they can uh, medically manage with IV carboplatin or for vincristin as chemotherapy, or can be surgically resected. Okay, of course you want to decide uh, this. It has to depend on the uh, if the patient has um, uh, 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 progression in his, in his optic nerve glioma that necessitates uh, intervention from the oncologist. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, can we move to case number six? Um, so uh, a two-year-old female presented with an abnormal head position noted since she started walking. Uh, actually, um, we will skip that case. I know. Okay. Uh, we will skip that case and I will move on to the uh, next. Uh, yeah, that one. Actually, it's fine. Okay. This is first case. Do we have someone? This is a four months old uh, child who was brought into the office because of a lesion noted in the upper lid since birth. Any plans? We want to discuss this case. Two participants raise their hands. Let's see who's that. Uh, we uh, just have the case. So, can we, uh, Muhammad, I think you did one case with us already. Dr. Muhammad. No. Yeah, I did. Do you want me to uh, take this case? Or? Uh, let's see if someone else would share it. Someone from R1 case, R1 patient, R1 uh, resident. If someone, okay. can, otherwise you can take it. Let's just give them a chance you know, to, uh, to be courageous. And uh, it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay. We're just discussing the cases. Sarah? Sarah Halali? Yes, Doctor. Can you hear me? Go ahead. 
Okay, so this is an external photo of a child showing a um, right upper lid uh, lesion, uh, slightly reddish purplish in color, uh, causing uh, mechanical ptosis, uh, mainly uh, of the medial aspect of the lid, uh, obscuring the visual axis. Uh, otherwise, the other eye seems to be within normal. So what are the points in the history that you would want to put uh, So definitely, what is the presenting complaint and how did it start? If it's since birth, uh, how it's behaving? Is it increasing in size? Uh, is it uh, decreasing? And whether this lesion is changing with any maneuvers uh, like uh, crying or if it's increasing with, um, with fever or any uh, upper respiratory tract infections. And, um, and whether the family noticed any uh, abnormal movement of the eye or any deviations of the eye, um, uh, any abnormal head position. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, tell me, um, go ahead with the next step in your management, which is the exam. Uh, sorry, Victoria? So go ahead and examine the patient. Okay, so for, for examination, uh, definitely starting with the visual assessment of the child, measuring the intraocular uh, uh, pressure and the pupil examination, external examination of the lesion itself, the size, um, and, and whether it blanches with pressure or, uh, or, uh, or no, and uh, any associated uh, proptosis, um, uh, check, checking also the extraocular motility, and uh, definitely anterior segment uh, examination complete uh, with dilated fundus exam um, uh, and uh, refraction for the child. Okay, and examining, sorry? Your voice is not clear. Sorry, doctor, what, what did you say? Examining the, um, the intraocular pressure in this patient would be easy. The intraocular pressure? Would it be easy to examine his intraocular pressure? Um, it wouldn't be easy because, uh, in, in this case specifically, because of the size of the of the lesion, um, and the age of the patient, yeah, and the age of the patient, yes, definitely. But we can estimate it at least digitally. Okay. What what is the mechanism of amblyopia in these patients? Uh, there are two mechanisms. It can be um, uh, anisometropic because of the uh, astigmatism induced by the lesion uh, over the cornea or uh, occlusive uh, amblyopia. So, so you have two components. Or dep deprivation, yeah, amblyopia. Okay. Um, if the patient has a pupil abnormality in, the, in, the, in this eye, mm. what does this I mean? Yeah, I would think about uh, uh, involvement of the optic nerve. So I need to rule out orbital extension with imaging. Okay. So only in this case. Usually we do not uh, do MRI for this patient unless we yes. have MRI abnormality. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this lesion, uh, the parent tells you that it becomes more prominent when the patient cries. Mm. Uh, and... Uh, it has been increasing in size since birth. It increases when the child is crying. And it, and it has increased also in size since birth. So, yeah, so you mean from, uh, what, would it change my management? No, this is part of the history. This is part of the information that the parents gave you. Yeah, so if it's increasing in size and uh, yeah, if, if, if it's, um, I'm thinking capillary hemangioma, it usually increases in size during the first year of life. So that's expected. And then um, it usually regresses uh, afterwards, after the first year of life. Okay. So it's actually just reassuring if they tell you it has been increasing because this is natural risk of hemangioma. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what is the difference here? Differential. Did I hear you correctly? Differential, doctor? So capillary hemangioma is on the top of the list. Um, uh, lymphangioma is another differential. Um, uh, although this likely, but orbital cellulitis as well uh, has to be ruled out. Um, 
yeah this is what i'm thinking uh, yeah correct in, in this case if Um, uh, sorry, doctor, your voice, uh, voice is breaking up. I cannot uh, hear you. If it's if it's an infancy, encephalocy, or meningitis, you expect some element of pulsation, right? Element of what? Pulsation. Oh yes, definitely. This should be picked up during examination if there is any spontaneous pulsations. Yes. Um, what are the drug that you will do for these patients? I'm really sorry, doctor. I did not hear that. What are the radiological tests that you do for this patient? Um, so we can do for him um, uh, MRI with contrast. What's before that? Can you do something easier? A CT is also another option. Okay. What about orbital ultrasound? Also a, a valid uh, option. Okay, so you go with the easy thing, or you can do optical ultrasound in the clinic. Um, yeah. What's the feature that you expect with capillary hemangioma? Usually, it is a well circumscribed uh, lesion and uh, enhancing with the contrast with no, um, no bony erosions. And uh, it will give you a high reflectivity. Yes, enhancing with the contrast, yes. No, I'm talking the, about the ultrasound. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yes, correct. Now, the MRI, you mentioned that it will be high uh, reflectivity. And mm. uh, what type of MRI you will see? A type of the MRI? Yes. Um, so, brain in orbit MRI with the uh, contrast. So, you will choose the T1 weighted. EST one weighted, yes. No, unfortunately, we cannot hear you, doctor. Um, one minute. Can you hear me better now? Uh, yes, slightly better, yes. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Hear me okay now? Hello? Yes, doctor, we hear you. You can hear me better now, is it okay? Is it the same? It's slightly better than before, but still, it's uh, slightly better, but it's slightly better. Okay, I'll try to use the text of mine and let me see if it's better or not, okay? Okay. Any change? No. Any change? No, I'm going to go on with this. Um, so how would you manage this patient, uh, Dr. Uh, so uh, specifically in this patient with the, with the size of the lesion and how it's causing um, uh, obscuring the visual axis, uh, we need to uh, intervene with um, uh, either uh, beta blockers, either uh, systemic or local. Uh, uh, the other option is uh, steroids, uh, again, systemic or local. Okay. Uh, let me ask you, uh, do you know of any systemic association between capillary hemangioma and other lesions in the body? Yes, yes, definitely. There are two uh, known associations, the Kassabach-Mirat syndrome, 
which is the type of uh, consumptive coagulopathy uh, with the platelet trapping and uh, thrombocytopenia. The other one is the faces syndrome. Uh, so, um, management wise, you said uh, we're going to use, uh, we're going to treat amblyopia. And, yes. Uh, and, and you mentioned the steroids. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the complications that you can get from propranolol? Uh, the well known complications are uh, uh, worsening of uh, bronchial asthma. Uh, hypotension, um, uh, uh, bradycardia. Um, what? How do you how do you give the patient? Yani how, how much do you know? How much would we give the patient? Um, fortunately, I'm not aware about the dose of the beta blocker. Now, uh, just for your information, we use three milligram per kg per day. Mm -hmm. We divide it into uh, two doses. Uh, mm -hmm. According to the body weight, and yeah. uh, patient, when we first start the, the treatment because we're worried about the um, blood pressure and the heart rate and the blood sugar, we use the we use it. Uh, we admit the patient for the patient has no complications from medication. Mm -hmm. and start the patient home with the dose. Uh, Thing goes well. Yeah. Uh, so um, now, now, what is the prognosis for this disease? Uh, well, as I s said earlier, usually they, uh, they, uh, it increases in size during the first year of life, and then it uh, it uh, regresses uh, afterwards uh, up to. Uh, uh, ninety percent, I believe, is the uh, or eighty percent. They regress by the age of five, if if, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, uh, to be more specific, uh, this disease passes through two stages. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, during which uh, rapid growth of the lesion happens, which occurs in the first three to six months of age. And then, following that, it goes into a stage called involutional stage. Yes. Uh, uh, which, uh, which can go on until age four or, or even five. Uh, whereby we gradually the, the lesion uh, decreases in size and um, yes okay great so uh, let's move to the next patient and i need a volunteer And you, Dr. Sara, come on. Can I have someone participate, please? And volunteer to go take the case. Our course, the one who are going for their uh, board in a few months. So this is a 33-year-old lady. Uh, she presented uh, to the refractive clinic because she wanted um, refractive surgery done. However, uh, she uh, has uh, this head position, she said, since ever she knows herself that she has uh, this head position, which she wasn't worried about, and uh, she never seeked attention for it. Dr. Atebi? So we can see that this uh, middle-aged female has a left head uh, turn. Um, and I would like to examine uh, primary gaze with the uh, primary position. Okay. Yeah. So from the history, she's since birth. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, if she's having uh, 
any change of vision, any diplopia. I'd like to also know if uh, she was wearing glasses or not. Uh, also uh, think about the history of trauma during childhood or history of falls. Was she investigated or not? Any history of uh, systemic diseases or illnesses, uh, whether endocrine or uh, thyroid, um, and any variability during the day. And uh, so, uh, yeah, she has she has poor vision, uh, but uh, with glasses she is twenty over twenty. But uh, mm -hmm. I think she came to the refractive clinic because she um, she wants to get rid of the glasses. Okay, so uh, we need to see what is the cause of this uh, left head turn or head tilt to be exact. Um, and that can be done by using orthoptic uh, investigation and examination uh, in the clinic. Okay. So you look at her eye movement. Okay. So we can see that this is the nine gaze position of the uh, patient. We can see in the primary gaze, um, she's having uh, um, mild hypertrophy of the right eye. Uh, that is worse on left gaze. And we can see that it is, she's having intact up gaze uh, in the right eye uh, and uh, a little bit of uh, an XT on the left eye with what looks to be a, a, a pattern. Uh, inferiorly, uh, she's having uh, intact down gaze, but uh, we can see also uh, that this pattern uh, somewhat of a V pattern. So she has a V pattern. What happened here in this position? Yeah, we can see that the, uh, the right eye, the elevation of the right eye is less than the left eye. So uh, we can see that the improvement of the hypertropia. In? In right gaze. Okay, you mean here? Yeah. Okay, okay. I know. Yeah, so worse here. So, okay, so, so with the left gaze, the hyper is worse. Okay. So we can proceed now with the uh, three-step test. This is, uh, that includes the head tilt. See which head tilt would be worse or better. Okay. So um, you go ahead and do the, uh, what do you expect in this patient? So I expect that uh, she might have improvement of uh, uh, gaze on opposite tilt, which is having here. Uh, of the head, uh, worse on the ipsilateral head tilt. Okay. So she has, um, so her, uh, her hypertrophy improved on the uh, right gaze. Yeah. And worsens on the left gaze and the head tilt will be opposite, the other way around. Right? Yes. With the tilt. So uh, what is your differential in this patient? <laughs> I think uh, since this is a congenital case, I would keep uh, right superior oblique palsy top of the differential, uh, but uh, should also involve uh, other differential diagnoses, uh, such as uh, like uh, uh, mycena gravis, uh, especially if she's having history of variability. Uh, also think about history of uh, like uh, uh, motor nerve palsy, uh, whether third nerve or others. Uh, also think about uh, um, causes of orbital lesions. Uh, these include either uh, floor uh, fractures and so on, uh, and uh, muscle, uh, inflammatory muscle changes. And um, uh, what she has here in, uh, is actually her inferior obliques are overactive. Okay. Actually, her both inferior obliques are overactive. Um, so this patient, we call this uh, decompensated by superior obese. Okay. Uh, okay. How would you uh, how would you differentiate between a congenital and an acquired superior obese? So I think it depends on the uh, number one uh, history of diplopia. Uh, if it's acquired, patient might uh, complain of vertical diplopia, more torsional component. Also, uh, hist uh, on examination, congenital causes might have large fusional amplitude, vertical fusional amplitude, compared to the acquired, uh, which is uh, approximately around four prism or less. Uh, 
cyclo refraction fundus examination uh, that's also helpful seeing the fovea and uh, exactly torsion what about the facial appearance of the patients yeah uh, they will have asymmetrical uh, facial appearance uh, smaller to the side of the head tilt okay so in this patient as you see here her, her left face is or her right face is more full than the left face right, right? Yes. She has obvious uh, facial asymmetry. And um, how would you approach this patient? So again, uh, what's the main complaint of this patient? Uh, I assume she's ha came for vision correction and refractive surgery. Uh, I'm not sure if she's ha symptomatically uh, complaining of cosmesis or not. Uh, generally speaking, uh, since there is no diplopia, and the vision is fine, uh, we can uh, observe the patient. Uh, if she's starting to complain, we can think of uh, surgical options. Okay, so the patient, you know, she was a little bit worried about the, the, the right head, the left head tilt. So it's, sometimes it's embarrassing to her. Okay, but uh, also assess, like discussing the outcome with the patient is very important. Uh, since she's having uh, like inferior oblique overaction, uh, and uh, I need to measure the degree of hypertropia, uh, whether it's uh, small or large, and see uh, how many muscles we need to uh, work on. Uh, that will help in the management. Okay. So, we will do our, for this patient, uh, we will go for a superior oblique attack. Yeah, sorry? We will go for a superior oblique attack, or what would you do? So, uh, superior oblique attack uh, is. Uh, in general terms, uh, effective in superior oblique palsy, but uh, inferior oblique also myectomy might have uh, a role. Uh, but uh, I mean, we discussed with the patient the post-op complications of the tuck. Um, uh, and of course, before you do any surgical procedure, as we have mentioned many, many times, that you have to do the force induction test in the operating room before you decide, because you might, with some of these patients, they might have uh, uh, they might have restrictions in any of the muscles, so you have to make sure that you have, she she has free movements in all directions before you decide on the surgery. Yes, and what was how many degrees she had? Uh, uh, how many degrees of hypertrophy she has? Uh, fifteen. Okay, so if it's less than fifteen, uh, one muscle would be enough. Uh, but also again, discuss with the patient she might need further surgery. If it's more than 15, we'll go for two muscles. Okay, so let's go ahead with the next case. Okay, and Dr. Um, Inmar. Marhaba, Dr. Sara. Trouble. Do you want to take this case? Hello, it's me, Dr. Sara. Yes, I do. Go ahead and take the test. So, uh, briefly, this is yes. patient, uh, NPR also. What, what's your level, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, finished residency, port eligible. Okay, great. Uh, so, mm. this is a patient who is a um, four-year-old boy, and uh, the family noted that he has this abnormal appearance of the eye uh, uh, since birth that has been stable and uh, they wanted to do, do something about it. So what okay. You, um, uh, or how would you approach this patient? So I'll start with history. Um, I would ask, uh, when did it start? Is it congenital since birth or was it acquired later on? Uh, is there any history of uh, uh, infection, trauma, uh, any cerebrovascular insult? Have, have he been any uh, uh, admission to the hospital? Uh, is there um, the prenatal pregnancy and uh, delivery? Was it uh, normal? Um, any previous uh, procedure as well? Uh, you mentioned that it was uh, constant. There is no progression. Uh, the patient um, had surgeries before, and uh, the patient they mentioned to you that um, uh, it's been stable like this, 
uh, and they have no family history uh, of so any of their kids with uh, this problem. So uh, just proceed with the examination, Victoria. Okay. So uh, for examination, normal examination, we would see if the patient is uh, syndromatic or, or not, any facial features as well. Uh, this is external exam. Uh, for um, ocular examination, uh, we can always take vision, check for amblyopia and uh, refraction, extraocular movement. As we can see here in the picture, there's uh, nine gazes uh, pictures. And the one in the middle, uh, straight ahead, um, he has ptosis with um, hyperdeviation of the left eye. Uh, in the right gaze, there is... Um, Mild adduction, in the, uh, mild, uh, adduction restriction in the left eye, I would say, with full abduction in the right eye. In the left gaze, uh, there is full abduction and, uh, full, uh, of the left eye with uh, full ad uh, adduction of the right, with no changes of the uh, lid uh, position. Um, he has limitation of uh, subraduction in the left eye, uh, toes is in the same uh, position as well and uh, limitation of uh, superior uh, nasal uh, duction and also with the superior temporal duction, uh, there is a limitation. For the inferior pictures, they are normal. There is limitation of elevation in practically all directions of gaze, right? Yeah, yes. The position is right and, and uh, up to the right and up to the left, okay? And the, the down gaze? Down gaze is uh, normal in the middle and in the right and the left as well. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, we did the ocular motility and uh, so what else, which part do you need to examine too? What are we missing in the examination? Uh, I would like uh, to do, uh, for, uh, if, the, if the patient uh, can tolerate it, uh, perhaps for suction test and a uh, force generation test as well to check for any paralysis, any fibrosis or restriction. Uh, and uh, So you wouldn't, you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't uh, attempt to that. He's only four years old. Uh, force duction, uh, force generation that you do on adults usually. Uh, if you want to do them in, on pediatric, you do them under a GA. Uh, I mean for the force duction, of course. Uh, but you have to do also the cyclophysical fractions. Yes. Uh, One to six. And... Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, so this is the, our findings now. Uh, so what do you expect? What give me a differential diagnosis? So my. Top differential diagnosis could be double elevator palsy, which is monocular elevation deficiency. It could be either inferior uh, rectus uh, restriction or elevator weakness of superior rectus and uh, inferior oblique. Um, sorry? Yeah. Which eye? Which eye? Which eye? Which eye? The left eye, doctor. So monocular elevation deficit, left eye. Yes. Um, what's the other What's the other uh, differential diagnosis you give me? Um, um, least likely, but I, I could say uh, uh, chronic uh, progressive external thermoplegia, but he's stable and yani he's not progressing. Uh, congenital fibrosis syndrome. But I would, I would suspect double elevator palsy first, inferior rectus uh, uh, palsy, uh, sorry, uh, inferior rectus restriction, and um, what else? Inferior oblique uh, palsy. I would consider uh, my congenital fibrosis syndrome in the, in the differential because of the limitation here on the on, uh, yeah. on adduction. So I would put this part of my, my, my I would put this as my, my second differential, okay? Because you're not, oh, okay. you're not supposed to get this one, but we, uh, 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 how would you manage the patient? Uh, so uh, most importantly, we check uh, if there's any amplyopia and uh, check uh, for cyclorefraction as well. Um, 
what else? Uh, we said we would rule out any posterior uh, lesion. And uh, he, he doesn't seem like he can, he, it doesn't seem from the pictures that he's compensating of chin up position. Um, so I, I need to check that uh, before these cases. And uh, is this word that he doesn't have a chin up position? Sorry, Dr. Is this worrisome to you that he doesn't have a chin up position? Um, it would give me some hint that he's trying to compensate at least. Well, he, do he doesn't have a chin up position. He does not. Yeah, he does not. So it would give me some sort of an indication that I would go to surgical procedure. Yeah, before surgical procedure, it would be an indication to you that, that he might be amblyopic in this eye. Yes. That's why he's not, because ch children, they, they compensate by, uh, or in general, uh, adults or children, they compensate by positions, whether it's a, a head turn or a chin-up position or whatever, because they want to be, because they want to be binocular. Is that me? Yes. We, whenever they yes. Want to use both, you, whenever the patient wants to use both eyes and he cannot, he will adopt a position whereby he can use his both eyes at the same time. So this patient does not have a chin up position indicating that he might most probably is amblyopic in this eye. Yes. Okay. So, so what are the surgical options for this patient? So I would need to take a patient uh, in the OR mostly because I need to check if he has inferior rectus uh, restriction. Because if he had double elevator palsy with uh, tight uh, inferior rectus, I would think more of inferior rectus recession. However, if, he, if it's, uh, the reason was a superior rectus weakness, I would think of NAP procedure. And uh, of course, sorry? NAP procedure. What is NAP procedure? NAP procedure. Uh, I, I would do transposition, a transposition of the medial rectus and the lateral rectus uh, uh, to the sides of the superior rectus. Okay. Okay. And uh, you mentioned that we have to do this course suction test before we do that. Okay. 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 That's very good. Yes, to differentiate between the two. I like right. it. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's move on. And we can have an R1 to do this case for us. Very simple, straightforward case. Let me see hands, please. So this is basically, uh, you were on call, uh, and then uh, the neonatologist called you to see this patient who is a newborn, who has this small swelling uh, at the inner canthus, which um, was noticed immediately after birth, and the baby is only one year, one one day old. Did everyone hear history? Can someone take the case? We'll see hands, please. Can I see an R1? R1, very simple case. Uh, nice, uh, straightforward. Otherwise, we'll take to Abdullah. Okay. Dr. Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, so, did you hear history or I will say it again? No, I must not history. So, this is uh, you were on call and they called you in the NICU. Uh, mm -hmm. One day old baby uh, who noticed was noticed to have this swelling uh, right after birth. Yeah. Okay. okay, I will start uh, first by uh, taking history. I will ask about uh, uh, prenatal as usual, prenatal history, any maternal disease, natal history, any history of trauma during birth, 
uh, and it was present since birth or not. But in history, you mentioned yeah, it was there since birth. And in history of uh, uh, postnatal history infections in ICU admission. After that, uh, I will ask about uh, family history. Uh, and uh, I will ask about uh, any other medical issues. If the patient has any other medical illness. And then I will proceed for uh, examination. Okay, so tell me what's the new examination that you will look for? Uh, in examination, first I will look to the general appearance of the baby. Uh, how is, uh, is he breathing normally? Is there any difficulty in breathing? Uh, after that, I will uh, assess the lesion itself. I will uh, uh, see uh, how is it yani, in tendency. Is there any pulsations? Is there any? Uh, is it firm or soft? Uh, is the baby bothered? Yani, is it painful for him if he is crying, crying when uh, when I press? And I will uh, examine the eye. Uh, I will look for the the eye itself, uh, any abnormality within the eye, and I will do full yeah, new ophthalmic examination. Okay, so uh, this is a bluish bluish swelling, uh, which mm -hmm. is, as you will see at the inner canthus. Uh, doesn't look like it is uh, painful, and uh, it, it's hard. It's non-reducible. When you press on it, it doesn't reduce. So. Yes. Differential diagnosis. Differential uh, first, uh, most probable diagnosis is uh, mucosid. Okay. Or uh, second is aroma, uh, encephalocil. All of these are differentials. A mucosid means it's the daclosis system. Huh? Daclosis to seal. Yes. Okay. What's the, di the characteristic of daclosis to seal? Uh, as you mentioned, yani, uh, usually it's uh, uh, bluish in color, uh, present since birth, and uh, uh, it's not uh, bothering the patient, any yani painless, and it's uh, lower than uh, before the uh, lower than the inner canthus in the lo location. Oh, yeah. Medial canthus. It's not the inner. Yes. No. Yeah, not above the, yes. And it is non pulsatile. It has to be non pulsatile. Yeah. Okay. What about the encephalocele? How does encephalocele, it's usually it's above the medial canthus. Yes. And uh, there is pulsations. Okay. Or uh, why is it not a dermoid cyst? Why what? Why is it not a dermoid cyst? Because the location, it's a, not the typical for dermoid cyst. Usually it's uh, near the bone suture. Usually it's uh, temporal or superotemporal. Okay. Uh, can this be a hemangioma, for example? Uh, it can be. It's one of the differential capillary hemangioma. Okay. Uh, what what are the clinical tests that you need to do for the patient? Do you need to do any clinical tests? Yeah, I uh, for first uh, I have to check the breathing. Is it bothering? Because the neonate are obligate nasal breathers. Okay. Uh, after that, I will press. I will uh, look for regurg uh, from the from the bank tie. So sometimes you need to uh, ask your ENT physician to look at the uh, using a nasal scope uh, to make sure that the nasal mucosa is not um, swollen and that mm -hmm. that it is interfering with breathing. Yeah. How would you manage the patient? Uh, management usually will start with the conservative treatment okay. uh, with uh, with massage. Will will try massage any yani, for one month uh, to see. Uh, but if the and we have to give the prophylactic uh, antibiotic because there is high risk for infection in this in such patients. Uh, if it didn't uh, resolve, uh, we will uh, consider surgical intervention early in those patients. What surgical intervention? Uh, we can uh, put uh, stent. We'll try stenting or 
ادخل اور سرجيكال يعني اف فيلد وي ويل جو فور بي سي ار usually uh, the, with this with with the stent usually uh, this result yeah so we'll do one last case uh, because i think it's exhausting for everyone is that okay so this is a uh, three year old uh, wearing uh, glasses he came to me to the clinic with those glasses he's wearing plus six uh, in both eyes uh, and um, He was brought into the clinic for further management. Okay. Can someone take the case? This is our last case. Ali? Yeah, Dr. Ali, go ahead. Okay, <clears throat> this patient you said is uh, uh, he's plus six. He's wearing plus six, yes, in both eyes. Okay, okay. When he start to wear this glass, and when the father and mother not uh, this deviation. Okay, so he has the deviation since, since birth, and uh, he's been wearing glasses compliant uh, for the past almost two years plus. Okay, and the same things. There is deviation. Is it constant? Yeah. This is his deviation. This is his orthoptic measurement. Okay. As you have to see it here. Okay. So okay. Deviation with glasses. At near is 45. And at distant with his glasses is 15. Okay. And he wears a plus three with a plus three at near his again 15 dial. Okay, so uh, his most likely uh, hypoaccumulative conversion exists. Uh, how would you approach the patient? Uh, first of all, Uh, I will do a full, uh, full extraocular mortality test. I will, uh, and th I will, first of all, I will take vision for both eyes to check if there is amblyopia or not. Check the uh, deviation. Uh, check the deviation with uh, uh, Muhammad. First, you uh, with the prism. To, uh, cover, uh, cover with the prism to see if the, uh, how many deviation, if it's below 10 or more than 10 with the glasses, and then do cyclorefraction, then f uh, do a uh, fundus exam and uh, full exam for eye. Uh, so you want to repeat his uh, cyclophysical fraction? Yes. Why do you want to do that? Hmm? Maybe yes. there is a change in the... Uh, maybe there is a change, uh, or maybe the correction is below or over that patient need. Okay, so now what uh, would be, um, this is his orthoptic here. This is his finding. Uh, so we, he, his, uh, his psychological fraction was correct. Okay, and um, um, This is his orthoptic measurement with glasses at near and distant and with wearing plus three. So uh, according to this orthoptic uh, measurement, the near more than distant and the uh, difference more, uh, more than 10 and also with uh, plus three, there is no change. So it most likely goes with uh, hypoaccumulative conversion exists. Yeah, it's called uh, accommodative isotropia with high ACA ratio. It's called high ACA ratio. When you have the near deviation, mm. more than the distant deviation with more than 15 prism, like here this difference is almost 30 diopter. The difference is almost 30 diopter. So if it's more than 15, we call this Accommodative isotropia with high ACA ratio. Okay. Uh, uh, 
دكتور الهاي اي سي ريشيو يعني هل المقصود فيه اذا حطينا البلاستري يختفي النير ولا انه نحن انه يبقى برزيستنس؟ لا يبقى حتى لو حطيته يبقى حتى انت لاحظ يعني هو هو اهم شيء عندنا انه الفرق بين النير والديستنس از فيري هاي يس موست اوف طبعا اتس نوت فيري كومن موست اوف ذا بيشنتس لما تقيس له نير وديستنس ممكن تلاقي فرق بينهم خمسة عشرة أو أقل أو تلاقيهم زي بعض تمام؟ هذا البيشنت أديست من خمستاش وأديست أثنين هي 45 بعدين لما حطيت له بلس 3 حطيت له بلس 3 that's why البيشنت هذا is wearing a bifocum شايفه؟ yes that's the bifocum لما حطيت له البيشنت بلس 3 النير ديفيشن حقته نقصت من 45 ل 15 يعني صارت زي صارت زي الديستنت ديفيشن والكوركشن تمام 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 ممتاز 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 الله يعطيك بيستخدم الان ال... يعني هو كانه لابس تحت لما هو بيطالع هنا كانه بي عنده هنا بلس 9 اكشلي يس 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 هو من فوق هو بلس 6 لابس لكن من تحت لابس كم؟ لابس بلس 9 بلس 9 انت حطيت له البلس 3 هذه فهذه اسمها اكوميتيف ديزوتروبيا وذ هاي اي سي اي ريشيو هذا ترى دكتور هذا فيري فيري كومن كويستشن سو اي اي سجست ذات يو جو ريد اباوت الهاي اي سي اي ريشيوز اند ذا ديستنس ميثود ذات يو تشيك ذا اي سي ريشيو انه ات هاز ديفرنت ميثود اند نورمال فاليوز كم تو كول ذيس بيشنتس از يو از يو هاف سين ان ذيس بيشنتس ذا ار تريتد وذ باي فوكال باي فوكال ولاحظ هو لما بيطالب الباي فوكال هي از ستريت اولموست ستريت وين هيز يوزنج هيز باي فوكال ذا بروبلم وذ ذيس بيشنت از ذات سام تايمز ذي دونت لوك ثرو ذير باي فوكال اند ذات ذات واي ذي ستي از لايك ناو هير هيز نوت لوكينج ثرو هيز باي فوكال عشان كذا تشوف انه عنده ايش؟ عنده از تروبيا وين هيز يوزنج هيز باي فوكال هيز اي از فول هيز اي از ستريت سو اتس ا فيري فيري بوبولار كويستشن ان ذا فاينل بورد اللي هي ايزوتروبيا وذ هاي اي سي اي ريشيو اوكي؟ اوكي. جو ريد اباوت ات ميك شور ذات يو فاميلايز يور سيلف وذ ذي ديفرنت ميثودز ذات ار يوز ذي ار ثري ديفرنت ميثودز ذات وي يوز تو ميجر ذا اي سي اي ريشيو اند ان يو تريت ان ذي بيشنت فور اكزامبل ان تريت يقول له اي ويل تريت يو سيرجري ليش؟ لانه هو عنده ايزوتروبيا حتى اثنين اند ذن يو تيل الاكزامينر اي ويل تريت يو سيرجري For this, he is not treated with surgery. You will treat him with bifocal. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. Uh, what about the still there is 15. Is it also significant? So you will do surgery. Yes, for the 15, you might be able to do surgery. طبعا هذا if if you may if you double check uh, his measurement or like his uh, his um, cycloplegic fracture is accurate. And the parents still want something to be done for the 15. You can do for for the 15. And if you go for surgery, we do something which is called Fadim procedure, uh, which is um, if you go for by me direct succession, then we do something which is called Fadim procedure, which is done specifically for patients who have a high ACA ratio. But this is, uh, I think, beyond uh, the level of uh, that you want to know about. Come on. طيب uh, I believe uh, that uh, we are almost two hours here. Uh, I think we, um, if you don't mind, we can stop. Stop. The, uh, we we uh, still have uh, almost like ten or twelve cases more to discuss. Uh, however, I think it's two hours, and maybe we're all tired. Um, if you wish to have uh, another uh, uh, conference where we discuss the rest of the cases, I don't mind. Uh, to do that on another occasion. Uh, we can arrange this now with Dr. Bayan. And um, I'll try next time to get uh, better uh, so that you don't have problem hearing me, uh, hopefully. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can still post it on the chat. I will look at it at the end uh, so that I can review it and uh, answer any questions. Okay? بيان الله يعطيك العافيه دكتوره ما قصرتي اوكي okay,
يعطيكم العافيه شكرا على السلامه